Good evening, folks. March the 29th, 2016. Here we are for our Bible study in Genesis chapter 1. If you'd like to join us, get a King James Bible and join us along. Uh, join in with us and tell your friends about our uh, little Bible study here. And you're welcome to send questions to thedoctordino.com. And we'll get to them on the regular daily YouTube channel, maybe about a month after you send them or so. Okay, we're trying. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for loving us. Thank you for letting us be part of your family. Lord, what a blessing to be called the children of God. Wow. Father, please teach us something from this amazing book now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. Who remembers what the word Bible means? Library. 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 I forget who said it first. Okay. And how many books in the Bible? 66. Uh, who said it? 66. Very good. Okay. Get rid of all this fattening stuff. Okay. Okay. Uh, what comes after 1 Samuel? 2 Samuel. 2 Samuel. <laughs> That's a tough one, right? How many chapters in Genesis? 50. 50 chapters. Okay. Uh, Genesis chapter 1, verse number 25. Did I die? 25. Okay. <clears throat> and God made the beast of the earth after his kind, and the cattle after their kind, and everything that creepeth upon the earth after his kind, and God saw that it was good. There have been no exceptions to this. <clears throat> Every animal has always brought forth after its kind. There are eight varieties of bears in the world. Black bear, brown bear, grizzly bear, panda bear. They had a common ancestor, a bear. Okay, there are just simply no exceptions to them bringing forth after their kind. Well, how do you know if they're the same kind? Well, can they bring forth? Uh, a bear and a, and a banana cannot, okay? Um, so in most cases, it's just obvious this is not the same kind, or it is the same kind. Okay, verse 26. And God said, <coughs> excuse me, and God said, let us make, notice the us, plural, let us make man in our image. Now, people have argued for centuries, what is this image of God? Well, I think it's a moral image. It's a spiritual image. It's maybe a, uh, a fact that Jesus, uh, Father, Son, Holy Spirit is a trinity, and we are a trinity. We have a body, soul, and spirit. Uh, Hebrews 4.12 talks about the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, and it divides the joints and marrow and uh, discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Uh, that talks about the trinity in that verse, Hebrews 4.12. So anyway, that's another whole story about the trinity, the fact that we are three parts and God is Father, Son, Holy Spirit. I don't understand it. I, I wish I did. I've tried awfully hard. Uh, someone sent me some articles about the Trinity that are pretty good. As soon as I'm done checking them all out carefully, I'll we may post those on 2peter3.com. But <clears throat> they're in my to-be-read pile along with several other things. <laughs> okay. Verse number 26. God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea. Lady Di, you tried that today, didn't you? Have dominion over the fish of the sea? No. You didn't try to catch any? No, I didn't. Oh, you didn't have dominion. They got away. Yeah, okay. People don't believe me when I tell them this, but I used to go fishing a lot when I was a kid. I caught a largemouth bass. He was that far from the boat. <laughs> I used to go with a bow and arrow. I don't want to have the patience to sit and wait for them to come to me. There he is. Wow. Okay, let's go home. <laughs> Been that way all my life. <coughs> <clears throat> have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. Okay, question. Whose life is worth more, a man's or an animal's? Man's. Man's is. God said so. That's how we tell. Uh, verse 27. Now that makes the animal rights people angry. Too bad. Okay. So God created man in his own image, and the image of God created he him, male and female created he them. And God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful, and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it. Here we have the same command he gave to the animals, and again the same drive and desire. Uh, first command, go have kids. Uh, fill the earth, replenish the earth, and subdue it. People say, well, see, God told him to replenish the earth. That means fill it again. Well, it means that today, <clears throat> but if you get a dictionary from the 1600s, I've got a dictionary. Where are my dictionaries? I don't know. They're in here somewhere. I forgot to look for them. But I, I, people send me stuff all the time. i got dictionaries from, uh, they didn't even have dictionaries in the 1600s, I don't think. 
But I got old dictionaries. 1828 dictionary is a big green one. It's in here somewhere. But uh, the word replenish simply meant fill. And it wasn't until after um, 1890 when the word replenish started to mean fill again. We think because it has the R-E in front of the word, it means do it again. And today, most words that start with R-E mean to do something a second time. Um, but that's not what it meant, like resupply. You know, in the military, you're going to resupply. Well, you already were supplied. Now you're going to resupply. But that's not what it meant in 1611 when the King James Bible was translated. So God said, replenish the <laughs> earth. Go fill it. Just go fill it up. <clears throat> um, and subdue it. <clears throat> And have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. Verse 29. And God said, it's a critical verse here. If you have any health problems or issues whatsoever, listen carefully to verse 29. <clears throat> and God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed, which is upon the face of all the earth, and every, by the way, on the face of all the earth, in the original creation, there were plants over the whole earth. Today, most of it does not have plants on it. 70% is underwater. A bunch is under ice. You know, like Antarctica, which does exist. And it's not uh, it's not an ice wall around you know, see, the flat earth. Okay, but um, he said the plants are over all the earth. When they get up to the Axel Island, which is up near the North Pole in northern Canada, they find redwood tree stumps. Well, redwood trees only grow in a few select regions of the world, and none of them grow up in northern Canada. You know, nothing grows up there. I mean, like nothing. I was in uh, Barrow, Alaska, uh, and no, I, I was I was in I, I preached in Barrow, Alaska, but I was I was taking the cruise ship, a little cruise ship, ten bucks out to see the Portage Glacier down by uh, south of Anchorage, and I got talking to the guy standing on the bow of the ship, waiting for the icebergs to break off. <clears throat> I said, what do you do for a living? He said, I drill for oil in the North Slope by Barrow, Alaska. I said, interesting. What kind of stuff do you find when you drill down? He said, it's the weirdest thing. He said, just a couple weeks ago, I think he said a couple weeks ago, he said, <clears throat> we drilled down a thousand feet through permanently frozen ground, permafrost. Ground was frozen solid, like drilling through an ice cube. And we started bringing up pieces of wood. And we, and we always save whatever comes up and put it on the ground, a core sample to see what we're drilling through so we can see what formation we're in. He said, we, we happened to hit the top of a tree, and we drilled through a tree, standing up, 300 feet tall, under 1,000 feet of permafrost. Well, first, there are no trees in Barrow, Alaska. Well, there was one in a Chinese restaurant, about this big around and this tall. They had to keep alive with floodlights all winter long. Okay, In the Chinese restaurant in Barrow, Alaska. No trees in the whole town. Um and you need, there was a Chinese restaurant in Barrow. You need to go visit. Where? Alaska, way up Alaska. Alaska. You don't like to go to Alaska. Okay. <laughs> but th certainly no trees 300 feet tall. I mean, the sun, because of the way the angle of the sun is up there, the trees get about an inch tall and they spread out because they have to get the sunlight. So the willow tree about this be about this tall and, you know, 40 feet wide if it, if it can survive at all. So how do you get a 300 foot tall tree? up inside the Arctic Circle, at the far north as you can get. Well, the world was very different. God said there were plants over all the earth. And look at verse 28 now. <clears throat> God said, I've given you every herb bearing seed, which is upon the face of all the earth. It's not that way anymore. In 2 Peter chapter 3, Peter said the scoffers in the last days would be willingly ignorant of how God made the heavens and the earth. What we're seeing out here today is not what Adam and Eve saw. If Adam and Eve came back today, they would look at these monster oak trees in my yard in Pensacola and say, oh, what happened? What do you mean, what happened? They're so tiny. Tiny, these things are huge. Man, they're only 70 feet tall. You should have seen them back in our yard. You know, it would have been just a very different world. Increasing air pressure, which I think the canopy would have done, increasing air pressure, would, it would have made it easier for plants to breathe. Because plants have to absorb gases also, carbon dioxide. So increasing air pressure. Uh, who was it? Carl Baugh did studies with that or told me about it. They raised uh, tomato plants uh, with the, the several things that plants need to grow faster. 
Increased air pressure makes them grow faster. Um, increased carbon dioxide. I spoke in um, Indiana at a church one time, and a guy came to me afterwards. He said, Brother Hovind, I just finished getting my Ph.D. in botany, raising plants. He said, I did an experiment for my uh, dissertation for my Ph.D. He said, <clears throat> I increased the CO2, carbon dioxide, that the plants get. Normally, the atmosphere is, I think, 0.06%. He said, I raised mine by 50%. I raised it to 0.09%. He said, I got twice as much fruit off the, off the soybean plants. He was raising soybeans. They call it a berry. He said, I raised soybeans. We got twice as many berries with a 50% increase in CO2. He said, I never thought about increasing the air pressure. I just simply increased the percentage of CO2. That's all. If you had increased air pressure and increased CO2 and filtered sunlight from the canopy above, and the music of the stars. Uh, there's an article in Creation Illustrated magazine about a guy learning how classical music played to his cornfield makes it grow huge. <laughs> so I think it had all that and plus perfect soil. But anyway, there were plants over all the earth and verse 29 in the middle. And every tree in the which is the fruit of a tree yielding seed, watch this carefully, to you it shall be for meat. God said, Adam, Eat the fruit, the vegetables, and the seeds. We don't do that. We eat the apple and throw away the core. Eat the peach and throw away the pit. If you eat an apricot, eat the seed out of the middle. That's hard. Well, that's the hull. Crack it open, and there's a nut inside. Here's some right here. Apricot power. And they do not taste good. But you like them, don't you? You can just eat them, right? There you go. I'll let you eat some apricot seeds. Uh, vitamin B17. Uh, now, you have a game coming out. We're not going to tell all about it yet, but about for people to learn the herbs. And you're ready to announce a um, couple days? Let me know when, brother. This You want to learn? Theodore, you played the game, did you? Mm -hmm. uh, Herbal Quest. with the, And that's I think that's going to be cool. If you want to teach your kids. Sam, you played it? Uh, not only a cool game, but a fun way to learn about herbs and what they do for your body. God said he gave these for the service of man. Herbs are for the, that's your, like you service your car. You change oil. Your car needs several different things. You need differential fluid, transmission fluid, brake fluid, windshield washer fluid, oil, gasoline. Driver. Uh, huh? Driver. The driver, yeah. Wobbleator shaft, fluid, uh, high-speed <laughs> muffler bearings, and all that stuff, Knuton valve. But uh, some of the fluids your car uses up, some of them it just uses. You don't use up the transmission fluid. You use it, but you don't use it up. Gasoline, you use it up. You have to keep adding more. Whereas transmission fluid, if it's all working right, you should not have to add more. So your body is that way. Certain vitamins and minerals and things your body needs. Some of it you need a lot of. And some of it you don't need much, but you need a little bit. You take a house this size, needs a lot of things, okay? But it only needs a key that's this big. One little key. And you don't have that little key. You ever been locked out of your house and can't get in because you don't have the little tiny key? Sometimes one little thing in your diet will really screw up your health. Just missing one little, you know, you don't, like copper. Uh, this guy told me, uh, he was talking about the importance of copper in your diet. I said, copper? He said, you don't need much. He said, but if you're deficient in copper, your hair turns gray. And if you add copper to your diet, you'll get your color back. Because he had, he had started taking copper. Now, copper has to be digestible. You just swallow a penny. You're not going to be able to digest. Like putting the gasoline in the back seat of your car won't do any good. It's got to be through a special system to get it usable, you know. And vitamins and minerals <laughs> have to be <coughs> in a usable form and sometimes require other things to work with them. Like a tire doesn't do any good if it doesn't have a rim. And that doesn't do any good if it doesn't have a wheel to mount to. You know, there's multiple things work, work together in a symbiotic relationship. Who cares? Anyway, vitamins and minerals, studying those, studying how, if you're going to, if you're going to live in your body the rest of your life, which you should plan to do, you might as well learn what it needs and give it what it needs to be healthy. One guy said, if you're sick and tired of being sick and tired, you better study what your body, what your body needs. Okay. Anyway, God said he gave us all these. He said, to you, it shall be for meat. 
Now look at carefully. God told Adam and Eve to eat fruit, vegetables, and seeds. He did not tell them to eat meat. Later, he said it's okay to eat meat, and it is okay to eat meat. But right here, he said eat fruit, vegetables, and seeds. Herbs, vegetables, and seeds. Verse 30. And to every beast of the earth, and to every fowl of the air, And to everything that creepeth upon the earth, wherein there is life, I have given every green herb for meat. Animals were all vegetarian before the flood came. Noah, uh, Adam didn't have to be afraid of any of the animals. Now think about it. Here's Adam and Eve living in a garden. They have everything growing right around them. They have perfect weather because high pressure won't let clouds form. You don't get storms. Watch the weather on the news tonight. High pressure, clear skies. Low pressure, storms. If as long as there's high pressure, you can't get clouds to form and you can't get storms. So they didn't have rain, I don't think, until the flood came. They had perfect weather. Ev everything growing right in your yard. So people say, well, if there was a flood and a pre-Adamite or pre pre-flood civilization, why don't we find some of their stuff? Okay, what would we find? <coughs> they wouldn't need a car because you don't need to go anywhere. They wouldn't need a house because you don't need to be protected. All the animals were friendly. You don't need to be close the door to keep the uh, you know critters out. They're all friendly. Lay down with the lion and go to sleep. You know, use it for an electric blanket. I just think I think we're thinking we're, we should find some of this stuff. Find what stuff? What would they need? In a perfect world, Garden of Eden conditions, they wouldn't need any. They would need all the stuff we need today to protect ourselves and to get places. They don't need any of that. So all of their great intellect could be focused on other areas. Maybe developing music or philosophies or something. I don't know. But whatever it was, it wasn't certain inventions they wouldn't need at all. Like, what do you need that for? Or maybe they knew things we don't even know, like trying to lift a heavy stone. We get this big machinery, you know, to lift this big rock. They'd say, what do you, why do you do that? Watch this. Here's how we lifted it. You know, <laughs> play music to it or something. I don't know. But there are stories about that of, People uh, able to lift heavy stones with, uh, with uh, musical instruments. I've heard. I've heard. I read those stories in some of these uh, stranger than truth uh, uh, magazines and articles and stuff. Like people send me stuff all the time. Who cares? Okay. But God said, verse thirty: Every beast of the earth is going to eat plants. Now, on Noah's ark, Noah took all these animals on. He didn't have to go get them. They came to him. People say, how did the kangaroos get from Australia to the Noah's ark? Did Noah have to go to Australia? Well, today kangaroos are stuck in Australia, but before the flood came, all the animals lived in all parts of the world. All the animals were living everywhere. Noah And Noah didn't have to go get any of them. God brought them to him. Read, we'll get to that later on, probably in about four years at the rate we're going. But um, now today they're stuck in Australia because after the flood they migrated out. We'll get into that about uh, the migration wave. We covered that on video number seven. Why are kangaroos only found in Australia? It's in the question answer session, DVD number seven. I keep saying video. So <clears throat> the uh, all the animals were friendly, vegetarian, until, including during the flood. Uh, turn to Genesis chapter six, and verse number four is where the God, five is where the flood starts. After the flood is over, God said, Noah, some things are going to change now. So the flood stories in Genesis six, seven, and eight. Go to chapter 9. Genesis chapter 9, verse number 1. They're about to get off the ark. And God says, Noah, going to be a couple things different now. So before the flood, everything's friendly. You didn't need cages on the ark at all, just rooms. He, God said there's going to be rooms on the ark, not cages. And I cover that in my book, uh, What on Earth is About to Happen. I have a whole section in here about Noah's flood. Uh, it's appendix number two of the book. Uh, about appendix one is about what was the creation like. Appendix two is what was what was that flood like? Evidence supporting the flood. You know, could they build a ship that big and stuff like that? So that in in this book is more on that. Who cares? Um, but so there were rooms on the ark. Noah didn't have to feed the animals. Does a farmer have to feed his cows? No, you drop off a bale of hay once in a while. They'll, they'll come find it. Put a watering trough out there. They'll come find it. Didn't have to water them. 
uh, didn't have to unlock the cages or bring the food to them or shovel anything. Most of the animals, if you let them roam wild, they don't go to the bathroom in their kitchen. Like I used to raise hamsters, hundreds of them, sell them to pet stores. You give them a big enough cage, they'll find one corner where they go do their business, and then you, all you got to do is clean out that little corner. So on Noah's Ark, I'm sure they had a couple of favorite spots where they go, and that, that's the part you got to clean. But Noah didn't need cages on the Ark. All the animals were friendly. After the flood, though, Genesis chapter 9, <clears throat> verse 1. And God blessed Noah and his sons and said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth, and the fear of you and the dread of you shall be upon every beast of the earth. Well, what is this? Noah, the animals are going to be afraid of you. Well, to me, that indicates pretty clearly they weren't afraid before this. Why would he say that? The animals are going to be afraid of you. They weren't up until this time. Now, why? I don't know. Maybe God put the fear in them. Maybe the climate change was different. I don't know why, but it, this is when it started. This is when the fear of man, and today just about all animals fear man, Verse number two, and the fear of you and the dread of you shall be upon every beast of the earth and upon every fowl of the air, upon all that moveth upon the earth and upon all the fishes of the sea into your hand are they delivered. Except you didn't get any today, Lady Di. Fishes, no to the fish. Okay. Verse three, every moving thing that liveth shall be meat for you. Maybe that's why we made him fearful. Man could now eat meat. Now, and the animals were afraid, and they run away because Bambi is scared because you're going to shoot them and eat them. Right, okay. Bambi's daddy, <laughs> or Bambi himself. Um, well, <clears throat> animals are afraid of man today, generally, <clears throat> and it has started right here. And God said, now you can eat meat. Why? Well, maybe because of the new climate change, things are different, and we need more energy. Pound for pound, you got to have you get a lot more energy out of a pound of meat than you do out of a pound of potatoes. Uh, or things like that, you know, vegetables, they've got to eat more of them to get the same energy equivalent. So that's another, is that stuff in your game, Herbal Quest? No, okay. Um, I, get, I guess I, I don't play games at all, uh, board games kind of stuff, but I, I'll I'll try it once, rather, just to see if it's, uh, to learn about herbs. I like to learn about herbs and minerals and vitamins. Um, so this chapter 9 is where the fear came on the animals and the ability, the permission to eat meat. Now, did they eat meat before this? Uh, they might have, but it, you know, why Why do we have the flood? Because they were disobedient. So God had said, eat fruit, vegetables, and seeds, and they might have been eating meat before that, but we, there's, no there's no way to prove either way that I can see from Scripture. But now you can eat meat. Later on, God gives requirements to the Jews, don't, don't eat certain meats. That was given to Abraham, or to a... Uh, uh, Moses, the commandments given to Moses, don't eat certain things. And later, even those commandments are lifted in Acts chapter, the great vision of Peter on the sheet coming down, chapter 10 or 11. He sees the vision, and now you can eat whatever you want again. Okay. And uh, <clears throat> Okay, so back to chapter Genesis chapter 2, I mean 1. Genesis chapter 1, verse number 30. God said, <clears throat> uh, I've given the, all the animals plants to eat. Verse 29, he said, I want you to eat fruit, vegetables, and seeds. And that was their diet. They lived to be 900 plus on that diet and probably incredibly high IQs. And in, who knows what knowledge they had. We'll get into that in chapter uh, 4. <clears throat> Verse 31, and God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was... Very good. This is the first mention of very good. Now it's complete. Everything was good up until then, but now it is very good. And the evening and the morning were the sixth day. No gap between verse 1 and 2. This is the sixth day. It all took place in six days. Verse Chapter 2, verse 1. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all the host of them. Everything finished in six days, and now God's going to rest today. Keep your finger here and go to Exodus chapter 20. <clears throat> Exodus, the second book of the Bible. Genesis, Exodus chapter 20 and verse number 8. <clears throat> Remember the Sabbath day.
to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work. Thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy maidservant, manservant, or nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For, meaning because, you know, why don't you work on the seventh day? Right here, verse 11. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Okay, why do you work six days and rest one? Because God worked six days and rested one. Now God is writing this on a rock with his finger. He doesn't stutter. He's telling him, I made it all in six days. So how can these guys put a gap between verse 1 and verse 2 or have any kind of pre-Adamite civilization? He said pretty clearly, I did it in six days. Now go to Exodus chapter 31. Exodus chapter 31, verse number 17. <clears throat> Exodus 31, 17, verse 16 says, Wherefore the children of Israel shall keep the Sabbath. Who's supposed to keep it? Children of Israel, okay, shall keep the Sabbath to observe the Sabbath throughout their generations for a perpetual covenant. It is a sign between me and the Norwegians, no, I'm sorry, and the children of Israel forever, for in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, and on the seventh day he rested and was refreshed. So here's again, there's five or six times where God says the Sabbath was the seventh day day. And so chapter 1 describes six days of creation, and that was it. It was finished after that. Nothing new is being created. After this, things might be rearranged, and you might take, you know, dirt and air and sunlight and make, you know, trees, but you're not creating anything. You're rearranging existing elements and chemicals. Okay, any questions? Whoa, over time here. Questions or comments on chapter 1? Genesis 1 has how many verses? Uh, Thirty-one. Thirty-one. Thirty-one verses in Genesis chapter 1. <clears throat> what is <clears throat> the last word of Genesis chapter 6? The last word of the chapter, Genesis chapter 6. P. P. Very good. This is called a sword drill. See how fast you can get around in your Bible. Okay. Psalms chapter 102. What's the last word of Psalms chapter 102? You got one guess. Psalm 102, the last word of the chapter. Lord. No. No. The. Very good. Sam. Oh, okay. <laughs> How many chapters in Exodus? 40. Sam, very good. Okay. All right, let somebody else get one on this one, Sam. You got enough over there. You're going to get fat. Jeremiah chapter 3 has how many verses in it? Jeremiah chapter 3. You got Job, Psalms, Proverbs, and Ecclesiastes, Song of Solomon. Isaiah, Jeremiah 3 has how many chapter, verses? Jeremiah 3 has. Looks awful good. Oh, you already got one, Sam. 25. So let somebody else get one. How about. He's, <laughs> How many chapters in Jeremiah? How many chapters in Jeremiah? 51. 51. Very good. Oh, all right. 51 chapters in Jeremiah. <clears throat> all right. Thank you so much for joining us, folks. If you want to uh, join our other program, send questions to thedoctordino at gmail.com, and we will probably not get to them for a long time, but we're trying. We can help us, uh, if we can help strengthen your faith in the Word of God, that's what we want to do. God wrote this book. He told us how the world began, told us how he did it, did it in six days. It has to be that way or it doesn't work. I mean, the plants and animals have to be symbiotic relationships created the same day or a few days apart, not millions of years. And he told us why he did it. And he told us where, how it got ruined with the flood. And he told us he's coming back to judge the world again. If you're not saved, you're not going to heaven. Get ready. You're going to be dead for a long time. Get ready for that. Take, take, pack a lunch for that trip. Thanks for joining us. Let's pray. Lord, thank you, Lord, for letting us be in your family. 
Bless each one here tonight, Father. Use this Bible study time to draw them closer to you. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, good night.